following is a non-profit fan-based parody. Project Octopath Traveler is owned by Square Enix. Please support the official release. Hey guys, this is Kupato here. Hope you enjoyed watching all episodes of the Octopath Traveler Machina Bridge. If you have, we can begin a special postseason segment I like to call Kupato Time. And if you haven't, what the hell is wrong with you, Koopa? Go back and watch each of these episodes we're crying out loud. Don't worry, Koopa. I can wait. Okay, that's enough time. Now then, it is time. Koopa! Time. And what makes this time so special, Koopa? Because unlike most other Abridged series, here in Octopath Traveler Machine Abridged, we like to take some time to give the reins to you for one brief shining moment, Koopa. Season 0 is now over, but Season 1 is about to begin! And a choice must be made! Eight protagonists, Koopa, each with their own stories to tell, Koopa. But only one of them can be the main character! But who will it be? Well, this is where I come in, Koopa. And I'm here to give you a rundown of what's coming up before you make your boat and impact what happens next, Koopa. So let's introduce each of the eight pro tags for you. Don't worry, Koopa. This will be the short version. This here is Ulbrich Heisenberg. The warrior, the tried and true fighter. He's headstrong and cocksure. Or was it the other way around, Koopa? Anyways, he's the legend among legends. As one of the greatest fighters in all of Hornsburg. Problem is, as of eight years ago, there no longer is a Hornsburg Koopa. Why? Because his butthole of a friend decided it would be a good idea to kill off their king and completely turn the tide of war causing all of the entire kingdom to collapse. So, yeah, that's not really saying much at this point, Koopa. He pretty much fell off the wayside and became a bodyguard for some podunk village in the Highlands. But one day, he got word of his treacherous buttfucker of a friend, which caused him to stand erect and stiffen up in the heat of the moment, Koopa. The blessed man he had once became was now cast in the shadows. Ulbrick would find his former butt buddy and dream him a new one. And perhaps, in this way, he would find redemption for his past failures, Koopa. This sexy lady is Primrose Azelheart, the dancer. At the young and personable age of 13, my father was killed by three mysterious men bearing the mark of the crow, Koopa. Soon afterwards, she made it her life's mission to find and kill all three of these men. Her only clue was that one of these men would occasionally go to a tavern in Sunshade, Koopa. So, she decided to take up a job as a dancer and wait for one of them to arrive. And arrive he did, Koopa. Ten years later, a normal person would, I don't know, Koopa, look for a new lead maybe, but Primrose decided that maybe slutting it up might be the better option. After all, she's one of the most popular dancers in the realm, for better or for worse, Koopa. But hey, anything for revenge, right, Koopa? And maybe, if you vote for Primrose, you might even get to see her naked. Better yet, if enough people pledge to this Patreon, that last remark might be more than just a stupid throwaway punchline. This is Trenza Colcione, the merchant. She's the youngest of our travelers, and yet she just happens to be the ripe old age of 18, which means she's legal, Koopo. Yay! Tressa's a simple girl with a big heart and even bigger dreams for adventure. And with the power of shekels, this girl can rack up dough faster than a pizza parlor. One day during her epic merchanting exploits, she comes across a shitty looking diary written by a mysterious adventure. And on he moves, Koopa. She decides to emulate those adventures, see the worlds, and perhaps get some treasure to boot, Koopa. This here is Alphen Greengrass, the apothecary. He's a simple country doctor who loves to help out others in need, especially if it's done at his expense. And that's about it, Koopa. 
strong independent woman is Hunt. A hunter! She's so strong, she doesn't even need a last name. Not only is she excellent at hunting, but she's also a master of pocket masters, Kupo. Man, I wish someone would abbreviate that into something more palatable. Like, I don't know, pocket monster or something, Kupo. Anyways, her pocket monster skills are only second to her master Zanta. It's just too bad nobody else practices this lost art. Kinda makes dueling a bit awkward, Kupo. Anyways, her master racked up such a gambling debt, he ended up having to pay favor for Eliza of the Knights of Ardant to hunt down a powerful monster, Koopa. Only problem is, Zanta's been gone for over a year. What is Hanit to do without her master? She may not need the man by her side, but it certainly helps, Koopa. <laughs> Say hello to Therion, the thief! And no, he does not have a last name either, Kupo. Therion's a legend among thieves, have been pilfered from the wealthiest of men. This master thief's come to be known as the Purple Bastard, Kupo. But this thief would soon meet his match, as he would approach the Ravis Manor and attempt to swipe their legendary treasure, which turned out to be the Dragon Stones. But little did he know that the Ravis family were actually looking to catch themselves the perfect thief. And with the bitch's bangle fitted to his arm, the purple bastard became the purple bitch Koopa. Now in order to win back his freedom, not to mention his street cred, he must find the three missing dragon stones and bring them back to Cordelia Ravis, mother of dragons. Why, I had to use that joke sometime, right Koopa? Say hello to Cyrus Albright, the scholar. He's your token black. Black mage, that is. He's a well-to-do professor in an academy. He's chock full of knowledge and history, Koopa. Which is all well and good, but in the end, he's only good for three things. Fire, ice, and lightning, Koopa. Seriously though, Cyrus is badass! His search for knowledge drives him to find a book that's been missing for 15 years, Koopa. Most would cut their losses at that point, but then again, you're talking about a book that's like the Necronomicon or something. That's nothing to sneeze at, Koopa. And finally, we have a woman of sacred birth. Born to guide people under the church of a sacred flame, this cleric was trained for a special pilgrimage known as the Kindling, a rite which would bring light in the world in order to prevent a dark god from rising up to destroy the world, Koopa. Her name was Liana Clement. However, Liana's role in sacred duty got hijacked by her adopted sister Ophelia, so you're stuck with her instead. Orphans, am I right, Koopa? And there you have it, our eight protagonist, Koopo. And now we have arrived at our decision point. It's up to you to decide which of the eight will be the main character, Koopo. Keep this in mind, once you choose your main character, you're stuck with him or her for the rest of the series. Seriously, Koopa, there will be no going back once you take your pick. This story will belong to whichever person you pick to be your main character. But Koopa, no, you ask. Are you gonna show all the stories anyway? What's the point of picking a main character? To which I say, SHUT UP AND ROLL WITH THAT Koopa! I planned this shit out months in advance. I had no idea it was gonna turn out this way. <laughs> Anyways, it's time to make your votes. Choose your main character, Koopa. This decision will set the course for Season 1. Not to mention the series as a whole for Octopath Traveler Miss Shinnabrench. But don't delay! The vote will only last for a couple of weeks, Koopa. I look forward to seeing how this vote unfolds. See you next season, Koopa!